Hello, everyone. It's a great honor to be invited to the Asia Trails Conference as a speaker. I wish I was there in person to meet all of you, especially our colleagues from Taiwan. Hi, Jackie and others. Uh, I'm just grateful to them for the invitation. But unfortunately, this time it will have to be a virtual participation from my side. I'm just hoping that there will be other opportunities and occasions to get together and exchange experience on trail related developments with each other. So my name is Hüseyin Aryurt and I work as a project coordinator for Turkey's Culture Root Society, which is a non-government organization established in 2012 in order to develop, protect and promote long distance trails in and around Turkey. We use trails as alternative sustainable tourism tools to provide rural development and protect tangible and intangible cultural heritage along them. Among our members are travel agencies, tour operators, professional tourist guides, botanists, cultural professionals, accommodation owners, and other tourism service providers, academics, students, and of course, hiking enthusiasts. Today, I will talk about joint valorization of common heritage on the case of Via Eurasia, which is a very long cross-border border trail running between south of Italy, through the Balkans, to Turkey, until Antalya on the southern coast. That's where I am now. So this session is named Civil Society Resilience Aside Regional and International Tensions. So I'd like to start with the region I'll be talking about. And uh, I will give you some geographical and historical information about it. Our region is Southeast Europe, this orange area you see on the map, the Balkans in particular. I'm going to show you a series of maps of the region from different times. So this is a map of Southeast Europe where we have countries like Turkey, Greece, Bulgaria, Romania, Serbia, North Macedonia, Albania, Slovenia. This map is showing the current nations and countries, but the borders between them didn't exist much in history. For example, between the first century before Christ and the fourth century after Christ, all these territories were ruled by the Roman Empire. When it was, when it was divided into two by the end of fourth century, the South, Southeast Europe was under the Eastern Roman Empire, which is also known as the Byzantine Empire. And when we come to the Middle Ages and modern era, we see that the Ottoman Empire ruled in the region. This map shows the boundaries of the Ottoman Empire at its greatest extent in the late 17th, 17th century. And the divisions started with the First World War in early 20th century. As you see on this map, new boundaries were formed in the region after the war. During the First World War, various Balkan countries chose to join different sides. So all the resentments were reinforced. And after the war, the boundaries were redrawn by the great powers, leaving ethnic groups divided. Religion as a source of future division was thus partly removed, but the war had made it impossible for Orthodox Christians to live side by side with Muslims. In 1923, about 1 million Greeks were moved from Turkey to Greece and a smaller number of Turks relocated inside the redrawn boundaries of the newly independent Turkey. Communist rule and the abolition of state religions in Albania and Bulgaria and military rule in Greece and dictatorship in North Macedonia further widened the divides between the Balkan countries and in 1993, the European Union was formed, excluding some of the countries in the region, namely Albania, Bosnia, Serbia, Kosovo, Montenegro, North Macedonia, and Turkey. So I wanted to start with these maps to show you that all these individual countries of today's uh, Southeast Europe, has, uh, they actually share a common history. And as a result of this, they also have culturally much in common, food, music, farming methods, and crops much seem the same whichever country you are in. 
the landscape is also similar. There are rough sheep grazed hills divided by deep river valleys, olive groves and deeply indented coasts and harbors and beautiful bays. What divides them is politics and religion in particular. In our present day, with the rediscovery of coexistence, the image of not the Ottoman Empire, but the ancient empires of Greece, Rome, and Byzantium have come to the fore. The common cultural heritage enjoyed across the area from the 5th century BC to the 11th century AD has left many classical sites, which have become a magnet for tourism. Archaeology and the rediscovery of common cultural heritage has become the peacemaker in the region, and academics and students have become cross-border ambassadors. Tourism has provided an incentive for peaceful relations. The sea network in the Balkans area includes the Black Sea, the Bosphorus, the Mediterranean, Ionian Sea, Aegean Sea, and the Adriatic Sea. The Aegean Sea in particular has become a blue cruise and beach holiday destination. The Balkan economies rely for much of their GDP on tourism, and they are now recovering after the COVID-19 outbreak. So we are speaking of a shared culture and tangible or intangible cultural heritage, meaning the physical infrastructure and past current social cultural context. This is what all these countries in the region are sharing and are trying to use as their tourism offerings. And our specific interest as civil society actors working in the tourism field in this region is based on one common cultural heritage element, ancient road networks. Here we see the Roman Empire road network as a subway map. It's actually a great work. I really like it. It's showing all the major road networks of the Roman Empire. When you look at the red line starting from Rome, where is it here in Italy, you see that it continues across the Adriatic Sea uh, through Albania and North Macedonia, then Greece until Istanbul in Turkey. It's called the Via Ignatia and it's the first road built by the Romans outside Italy. It actually linked the Western and Eastern Roman empires, Rome and Istanbul. And since 2014, this road network is extended by linking several existing individual trails. Non-government organizations from different countries have been working together to establish the concept of a cross-border cultural route, an international trail named the Via Eurasia. This international route, which links Rome to the south coast of Turkey, has been supported by three European Union projects so far. And these projects brought a do dozen of civil society organizations together to collaborate on a common ground. So the theme of uh, Via Eurasia is the ancient roads and their accompanying uh, infrastructure, like bridges, other monuments, and buildings, as we see uh, on the photos in this slide. And the overall aim of these projects was to contribute to the sustainable management of the Via Eurasia, led by civil society, and promoting a diversity of cultural heritage and expressions. Culture Root Society, the organization I'm working for, was the leading organization in all these projects. And we had partners from Italy, Albania, Greece, and so on. So what did we do actually? We did collaborative activities. We had reciprocal visits uh, between these countries and uh, representatives and local leaders visited the accommodation and other services. They saw local products and observed the works of local administration and NGOs in Italy, Greece and Turkey mainly. Then we had planning activities with local municipalities, NGOs, walking clubs, experts from heritage fields, etc., in order to define needs and problems on waymarking, signposts, natural and historical sites, accommodation, travel agencies, transport services, promotion, and marketing. We also had youth activities. We worked with volunteer groups to waymark and then test and evaluate the route in different sections. 
the volunteers came from many different countries uh, inside and outside Europe. We also had academic activities where we produced joint publications, including a cultural route guide, reports on national and international conservation legislation with possible solution recommendations when needed. We also had marketing and media activities. We organized marketing workshops led by uh, online marketing experts. We also produced guidebooks, uh, maps and apps, uh, also films about the trail. Regarding promotional activities, we did online and offline promotion in each country and other relevant European platforms like fairs, conferences, websites, online and printed magazines, photo exhibitions. Uh, and these are the photos from those exhibitions, which were taken by volunteers and local people. And this picture on the left side is from the road shows we had some time ago. We just decorated a minibus and visited so many villages and towns on the VA Eurasia, talking to local people, local administrations and hikers, uh, basically. It was a very fun activity, uh, in my opinion. As well as a desire to preserve the common cultural heritage, the Roman road network, I mean, a major aim of the route makers is to encourage people along the route to share cultural creativity. The latest project, Performative Journey on the VA Eurasia, created a series of site-specific artistic workshops in historic locations along the route. Here, guided by professional artists, uh, local people performed a series of mimes songs and actions to illustrate their joint history and memories. Participants included historians, cultural professionals, students, architects, uh, tourism guides, etc. from Turkey, Greece, Albania, Croatia, Bulgaria, uh, North Macedonia, almost all the Balkan countries. And the documentary film of the performances was shown in Berlin in Germany, and uh, it has been entered for several film festivals, inclu including the Trails Film Fest in Skiatos, Greece. This is only one small step to creating solidarity based on shared heritage. We hope that the municipalities along the route will also work together across borders to support and encourage the development of the VA Eurasia for the benefit of civil society, especially in the smaller settlements along the route. By this way, can we uh, turn the clock back 2000 years? We don't know, probably not. But we know that empowered civil society can make big changes despite old and new boundaries. And that's what we are trying together to go further. I would like to thank you and wish you all a happy new year in advance.